Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Yep. How we going, people? I came out here tonight to take the bed off this 4x4. Took the bed bolts out of there. There, and for some reason I got a sneaky suspicion that I needed to take the spare tire out. I found out why. Because there was another bolt hidden right there. And one on this side right there. One on this side was that you can actually see the where there was a a plate on there that was for one of the muffler hangers they put it in that hole so I wasn't counting those two holes so there's actually as far as I know right now without looking any further there's eight bolts that hold this bed on and they're pretty good sized bolts but I also think I need to do a little uh, do some replacement shocks on this bad boy too I know that's just a housing to keep the dirt and stuff out of the cylinder but um, when they get like that you really need to uh, put some new ones on it and this one's gonna be fun because you see up in that little crevice up there there's two bolts there and then of course just the one down at the bottom and the other one's just as bad right there because you still don't have any room to work on it the good thing is you can get up you can get all kinds of room on it underneath but getting up to the actual shock top itself to get those two nuts and two bolts out up there is going to be a trick it may not be too awful bad since the muffler's off she's got a let's see two four six 8, 10, 12, 14 bolt rear end on it. So, it's the, I guess that's the beefier one that they put on these 2500s. Nice thick little spring package. But, now I need to get up front there. And as far as I know, there's two more on each side. Two on this side, two on that side, up at the front, that need to come off, and then I'll be able to take the bed off. Now, I could be surprised, but right now that's that's all I'm counting. So that'd be four on each side. Not too awful bad, but they're a pain to get out. I'm having to use the half-inch ratchet and the um, and a pipe on it kind of like a breaker bar because I'm too lazy to go to my truck and actually get the breaker bar I have <clears throat> but it's working like I said I like I showed you I've got these other four out so four more bolts hopefully I won't be too awful we're out when I'm done and I can go ahead and lift this bed off this thing tonight and get ready to start cutting out that cab corner and flip it around where I can get the other um, panel welded on the fender well on the driver's side. I think I'm just going to set it off in the yard over here. Maybe flip it upside down to do the other um, wheel well. Nothing saying it's got to be upside right. I can bondo upside down just as well as I can with it right side up doesn't make any difference I'm going to show you guys something I just found this is the inner fender well on the passenger side right there's all the work I did welding it up fitting the panel in getting it all flush and everything before I put the bondo on it I, I call it bondo even though it's called something else because that's essentially what it is but look at that. Look at that. 
That's not just surfaced rust, that's eaten into the fender. So it's just a matter of a time before right there or right there is bubbling up on the outside also. If I learned anything from watching Pizzer's channel, it's that that stuff doesn't go away and there's not really a way to defeat it. <clears throat> I haven't brushed it all off, but it seems that somebody splattered mud up in there and probably salt and everything else from the roads. I've got a feeling this thing was up north for a little while anyway. That's why it's rotten. But uh, that right there being the, another issue and one that I don't care to have to revisit, I'm probably going to see if I can find another whole bed for this thing. Because there's no, no sense in fighting it this time and then six months having to go back in and do it again because something like that. I mean, I can grind that down to the bare metal and put some primer sealer on it, but it'll just be a matter of time before it eats its way back out again. So, as soon as I can get that ornery little sucker right there to come out, that's the only one holding this bed in on the passenger side at all. That one didn't cooperate. That one kind of broke off on me in there, but I can drill that one out. That's not a problem. I've got some easy outs that'll take it the rest of the way out or roll it the rest of the way back in for that matter. And then I've got two on the driver's side and we're done. One thing I'm worried about is I'm probably going to wind up having to get the grinder and just grind that one off. Since I'm not going to go back with this bed on it again, I don't think that's going to be an issue whether I grind it off or not. But that's where I'm at, not having any fun, especially when I saw that. That right there just was a major disappointment to me. If it had just been surface rust or mud or something on the inside of the um, on the inside of the rear fender, I wouldn't have thought nothing of it. I'd have brushed it off and went on. But when I brushed it off and it's all thick and black and and eaten away at everything. I'm not going to keep fighting this fight. I'm just going to cut my losses and go get another bed for it. They're plentiful around here and most of them don't have that kind of junk on them. But that's something that I'll keep in mind when I go look for another one also. Check all those little inside spots like that to make sure I'm not getting one that's uh, in the same shape or will be soon. Because I don't want to have to do this again anytime soon. Yep, that's where we're at, and then I'm going to have to get up in there and uh, get this transmission bolt snatched out after, or eventually. Then I'll have to take the transmission mount off. I do need to get up in there and get those bell housing bolts off and then figure out how I'm going to get this motor snatched out of this thing. That's going to be a fun little feat all by itself. I got the bed off. I know you can't see a whole heck of a lot, but good lord. It's kind of rusty all the way around, but it's not real bad. Most of this is just surface rust. There's a little bit of a little bit of cancer right there, but I think if I sandblast this whole thing. I should be good. I'm gonna get my neighbor to let me borrow his sandblaster and then get out here and just blast all this off back down to the bare metal. Bumper's not rotted, bumper mounts aren't rotted, the bolts are, but that's common for an 88. Frame's in pretty good shape considering the age and the fact that the rest of the body on it's rusted all to pieces, or starting to. Um, I had to cut that bolt off. That one was a pain in the butt. There's the front one, there's the second one. And then there was four on the back back there. And I'm paying for it right now. I'm probably going to be paying for it quite a while. But 
I lifted her off of here myself. Excuse me. There's where I fixed. You can see my weld in there. Not pretty, but it's done. And there's the rust I was showing you earlier. Now it's only on this side, but it goes pretty deep. It's bubbling inside, so it's just a matter of time before it eats through. <coughs> and yeah, I could probably patch another piece of metal in there, but for all my time, it'd be just as easy for me to go ahead and get another, another bed for it. It wouldn't cost that much and I can get one that's got all uh, just a solid box all together I can get one I think they said for 170 bucks so it's gonna be a while cuz I, I haven't got any money right now but I'll just run it without if I have to I'll do like a lot of the rednecks around here do and just build me a little light stand up off the frame right there and hook the lights back up to it but that's pretty much where I'm at. Now to get all this blasted down to the bare metal again and get something on it to coat it so it doesn't continue to rust anymore. And then I'll be ready to crawl up under here, snatch the transmission bolts out. And if I have to, I'll borrow a, a cherry picker or engine hoist snatch that motor out and get it fixed now you see it almost rusted clear around to the um, to the seam on this one had it gotten into that seam that would have been a little bit more it would have been, it would have been a little bit more trouble now the normal cab corners go right about here see cutting it up that high and I can cut one off right here and go just around to the corner the rest of this is all fine there's no need to get in up here so I'll just cut it the rest of the way off here and down that the inside of that seam right there and if I stay to the inside of it when I get ready to weld the new corner back on it I'll uh, have something to weld to. I can just weld to the old old seam and then put some seam sealer on it. Not this little metal tape crap that they had on here. That's a joke. It wasn't even a good joke because it didn't last for nothing. Look at that. Doggone shiny duct tape. Heating and air conditioning duct tape. And they just slathered it all over everything. But anyway, that's where I'm at with this thing. Yeah, more tape. So this is that spongy crap. I'm gonna get all it out of here too, cause. All that does is promote the rust growing in there when it gets damp inside the cab. And this is going to be a romping truck, so there's a good chance it's going to get damp in the cab. Cab corner, rockers, and the new bed. Of course, I'm going to have to leave whatever bed I get off of it until I get the replacement bed and get ready to paint it. Then I can just paint the cab by itself, tape it all up, paint the cab, and set the bed up on the frame here. Keep it set back away so I can get the front of the, the box too, and just paint the whole thing. Now there's the original gold color. Doesn't seem like there was much of anything wrong with it. I don't know why they felt like they had to nasty it up with the old spray can primer. You can see right there, spray can job. Looks like crap. From a distance it didn't look so bad, but they didn't do a very good job of it. You got runs and bubbles and all kinds of crap in it like right there. 
So I'll be DA sanding all that right back off of it. I don't know if I'm going to DA sand it or just throw some lacquer thinner or what my buddy calls D paint on it to eat all that crap off. Even if it takes it clear back down to the metal, that's just another layer of paint that I got to get for it. But yeah. <coughs> it's still got potential. It may not look like much right now, but it's a Chevrolet, so I got to do what I can to save her. I don't I don't like giving up on vehicles too easy, especially when it's something I know I can fix myself. But I'm going to go ahead and end it here cuz got another stinking train coming. But all right, thank you for watching, and you guys have a good night.